I have a kitten here and I hope she'll not distract us from our talk, but it seems like she's falling asleep, so that's good. Всем привет, my name is Vika, I'm very glad to see you on my channel today and I've recently asked you on my Instagram uh, if you have any questions about the situation in Russia at the moment and about our immigration process and I've got so many questions that I've decided that I definitely have to film a q and A. I I picked the most popular questions and I'll leave timestamps uh, in the description so you can go through timestamps and uh, go straight to questions you are interested in the most. I will divide them into categories. So first I'll talk about the situation in Russia in general and answer questions related to that. And then I'll talk about more personal uh, experience of our immigration and answer questions related to that. So let's start with questions about Russia in general at the moment. How are people in Russia doing generally jobs, food access? So uh, according to what I hear from my friends and relatives, life is pretty similar to what it was before. So not much have changed. The only like real changes they see is the food prices, just prices in general, everything became much more expensive. And I think it's a global problem, not only in Russia, like food, household stuff, just electronics, everything became much more expensive. And uh, that's the first thing people notice. For about a couple of months, people were buying too much sugar and flour um, from and the, like women hygiene products <laughs> from supermarkets. And because of that, there were like a lack of these products and there were no sugar in supermarkets, but then people calmed down a little bit, stopped buying all of this sugar. So now everything is back in places and uh, you can find everything you need in supermarkets. But when it comes to jobs, I know that many people lost their jobs because international companies are leaving and closing their stores and closing their factories and selling their businesses. So um, I can't. I don't know anybody in person who was fired or who had uh, lost their job, because most of my friends and relatives are kind of self-employed or work on Russian organizations. Um, but I know that there is a problem like that. Most companies try to compensate that financially for their employees somehow, like you know, give extra salaries and all of that. But it's still a big problem because people need to find other kind of jobs somewhere and you know it's hard to find a job at this uh, period of time and also many Russian companies reduce their production of things because they can't uh, get enough you know details from abroad or just special materials they've been using and things like that so it also has been a problem and also some people have been losing their jobs because of that. So in general, there are problems with jobs, not many problems with food and just prices rising and things like that. Repercussions of sanctions, what has been strange or annoying about it? Uh, I had to Google the first word because I've never heard it. So the most annoying thing for most people, according to what I hear from my friends again, first one is the like companies leaving and like stores closed and brands leaving that people are used to like and uh, many people don't know where to buy stuff. For example, IKEA has closed their stores and many people don't know where to buy things because they're used to shop at IKEA all the time. And the many other stores like mass market stores, so people have been very annoyed about that. Second very annoying thing uh, was about bank system and that was uh, very annoying to us too, although we immigrated. Um, there are troubles with bank system because of all the sanctions and there are troubles if you want to transfer money internationally from Russia or in Russia. Um, there are just weird commissions in Russian banks now, crazy commissions for all the international transactions and not all the banks can do them. And with keeping, you know, dollars in your account or euros, like there has been a lot of weird things happening in the bank system and it it is very annoying. Like banks have been blocking stocks <laughs> and just 
that's something that we've experienced too and yeah that that was very annoying uh, other than that i think um regular people don't see any consequences of sanctions at this moment in life i feel they might see them later but at the moment they just see you know like bank system troubles uh, stores closing and just prices rising so that's the most like annoying thing for people how come a lot of russian athletes still get to post on instagram <laughs> uh guys that's that's a funny question because if you follow russian bloggers uh athletes like anybody on instagram you probably have noticed that they still post on Instagram, although Instagram has been banned and Russian government has been blocking Facebook and Instagram and you kind of can't use them legally <laughs> anymore. Uh, but everybody has been still using Instagram and I think um, this is quite familiar for people who come from another country so where there are government restrictions for different websites like China, for example. Um, I, I think there are a lot of other countries, but I can't remember now. But anyway, people have been using Instagram through VPN services. Um, so VPN, I can't be wrong with technical details because I'm not like very deep educated in this whole thing. But VPN is sort of a thing that makes your phone think you are uh, accessing internet from a different location. So for example, I'm in Russia and I turn on like v VPN service on my phone um, and I, like, I click that I'm in France and now my phone thinks that I'm in France and when I access internet and different websites, all, all of them work like they would work from France. And then you turn this thing off and your phone thinks that you're in Russia again. So basically that's, that's how it works. <laughs> And people has been using that. Um, you have to, you know, like download some apps, and that's actually very easy. Uh, most of the time, you you kind of have to pay for it, so it's not free, but it's not very expensive, and it's a little bit uncomfortable to use because you have to turn it off and turn it on all the time. Um, otherwise, your phone will be acting very <laughs> weird. <laughs> but in general, people have been using Instagram. With, with these services and I know that Russian government is trying to um, kind of ban this VPN thing too but it's a long and complicated process so it's still working and I think it will work for quite a long time so people are using it. <laughs> what do you think about the new McDonald's? McDonald's has left Russia and closed all of its restaurants in Russia but uh, they decided to sell them so McDonald's sold their business in Russia to a Russian businessman. They obviously can't uh, continue to use the McDonald's logo and all of their like food names and their design, but they use their restaurants, they use their recipes. So everything is kind of the same, but with a different design, different logo and a different name. So McDonald's now looks different, but everybody knows that it's McDonald's. Well, used to be. So, as I heard, food is the same. Uh, when it opened, uh, people were like going there like crazy. There were so many people. Everybody wanted to try if it tastes the same as the original McDonald's or if it's different. As I know, everybody says that it's the, the same. They had to um, take out some positions from the menu, like the most popular ones, like Big Mac, I think. Uh, they can't call it like that but they have just different names for different burgers. And I'm sure people will still eat there and go there because people like McDonald's in Russia a lot. But at the same time, I feel it's not the same anymore because McDonald's is not about the food only. It's also about the whole brand and the atmosphere as well as all the other brands. You can name something differently, but it would not kind of feel the same for people emotionally. So... I don't know, like, I don't know if it will work as well as McDonald's used to because, as I said, McDonald's has been very popular in Russia. Does your state TV make Ukraine out to be the enemy? Yes, uh, Ukraine, uh, all the Western <laughs> civilization, USA, Europe, like, everybody 
is the enemy according to Russian TV and um, Russia is kind of protecting itself from all the Western enemies according to Russian TV. So, and we don't have any oppositional, you know, like TV channels. All of the TV is kind of government related TV. So every channel you watch is controlled by the government, <laughs> even if it's like the channel with cartoons or just movies. All the news, all the news say that everybody is the enemy around Russia. Well, almost everybody. <laughs> Do the general population support the invasion? According to uh, official statistics and some other statistics, uh, about 70% of people who have been asked, they support. Uh, but I feel that we can't ever trust statistics like that because it really depends on how you ask, like what words you are using for asking and just who asks because people um, even if they have some kind of different views on the situation, most of the time I think they will not admit it if some kind of journalist is asking them, because pe all the people are afraid of kind of consequences, like they, nobody wants to get in, in trouble. So yeah, I think even if somebody has maybe different opinion, they might say that they are kind of okay with this whole situation, just not to get in trouble, you know. But I still feel like there is a big percent of people supporting this whole situation, or at least kind of being neutral about it. Uh, because, as I said, the TV is all government controlled and TV presents everybody around to be the enemy and Russia protecting itself. And there's a whole like propaganda thing. And many people just watch official news on TV or on the internet, many people trust official news and many people just trust, trust what they've been told. So I feel like these statistics, like I don't know how much we can trust them, but I think there is some part of truth in them anyway. Is it easy or safe to leave the country? Uh, yes, it is easy. It is safe. Uh, there might be troubles with visas if you want to go to a country where you need visa, for example, to the USA or Europe. Uh, it's very complicated at the moment to get any kind of visa abroad. But if you want to go uh, to the country where you don't need visa, so for example, like we did with Georgia, uh, you can just buy the tickets and go. <laughs> the prices for tickets are quite high, so that might be the problem. And if you need the visa, that also kind of a problem but in general nobody will stop you from leaving you can just buy tickets and, and go if you want to did you meet other russian people in georgia who left for the same reasons as you did there are so many russians in georgia at the moment and belarusians uh, like if you go around the, the city you'll definitely hear russian language in a cafe outside on the street just <laughs> so many people and I'm not sure that Georgians are very happy about this situation. I think they're kind of not really glad that people are moving here. But, you know, Georgian government is quite calm about this because um, there have been a lot of tourists always in Georgia and uh, now people are coming for like long term period, but many are still living somewhere else. For example, many come to Georgia and then wait for their visas to Europe or to America. I've met a lot of people like that. And many came to Georgia because it's the, the easiest you know, way to go. And then they are thinking about some other places they can go next. Many just moved and live in Georgia now. What direction most of Russians immigrate to these days? So I think Georgia is the most popular place because we don't need visas for the whole year to live in Georgia. So you can just come and live in Georgia if you want to. Also, Turkey is very popular. I've seen some statistics that Israel is also very popular. Many try to get visas to America or Europe if they can. Armenia. Armenia is also a very popular place to go now. Kazakhstan 
is also quite popular nowadays. So these these two can these several countries that are close to Russia and they have a little bit similar background except for Turkey. Um, these countries are quite popular to move in. They also are not very expensive to live in. So I've seen people moving to Dubai, some bloggers moving to Bali, and you know places like that. But I think Georgia and Turkey are like the the top two. Do you know anyone who has left Russia since you and your family left? Yes, we have a lot of friends. Well, not a lot of, but uh, some amount of friends and acquaintances who also left. We have two families from Krasnodar uh, here in Tbilisi as well. One, they, one were living with us for about a month. We also have some friends uh, who moved to Argentina, Brazil, USA. <laughs> yeah, so some people have been moving different places, Turkey also. And um, some of them are coming back or came back already because they found it harder to settle down in the new country than coming back to Russia and it kind of made more sense for them to come back. But some settled down somewhere, so yes, we know people. But I think most of our acquaintances and friends still stayed in uh, Russia and they live as usually in Russia. So it's not, it's not like the majority of, of people who we know, it's just some small part of people who we know also left, but most stay. I still want to travel to Russia. Do you think it's a good idea? I've got several questions like that. And I actually think traveling around Russia is a great idea. Um, just, you know, Russia is incredible when it comes to nature, history, food, the, the beauty of cities like St. Petersburg and Moscow and like Russia is very big, so there are very different locations with very different whole atmosphere and very different experiences you can get. And I think traveling around Russia is, is a wonderful idea. It's actually has been a dream of mine to travel around the whole Russia, to take the Trans-Siberian train, to go to Kamchatka, to go to, you know, I love St. Petersburg. But I would recommend to wait when the whole situation will be over. Nobody knows when it will happen, but everybody hopes soon. So I would recommend to wait when everything will be over and um, just for for the emotional comfort, for, for just general safety, for understanding that things are kind of stable. And the tickets are very expensive now too. And people, I think in Russia, people are a little bit nervous about this like, Whole thing happening so I think it's great to travel around Russia but maybe it's not the best time at the moment just a little bit later <laughs> it would be better what positive things about Russia and the Russian culture would you like people to learn and know um, that's the last question about Russia in general and I wanted it to be a little bit more positive one um, I love Russian culture I love history I love literature I love food and I love the the nature, so I would really uh, like if people would have a chance to travel around Russia and experience all of that, to go to the museums, to see the beautiful architecture, um, to try food, to see all of these beautiful landscapes and just experience the country by themselves. And I also love Russian language and I'm usually very glad when people uh, tell me that they learn it and they can read something in it because I think that Russian literature from like 19th century, 20th century is just incredible. There are many, many things that I find beautiful. Let's talk now about our personal experience of immigration. And I've got a lot of questions about it. Why did you choose to leave? Was it difficult for you? And why did you leave so quickly since you had a good life there? Yes, we had a good life there. We had an apartment we didn't have to pay for. Uh, we were living in my dad's apartment that it, and it was very nice one in the city center. We were living in a good city. We had a wonderful church there and just a lot of friends. And in general, I feel like we had a very nice life there, but we decided to leave because um, 
it felt too overwhelming to be in that environment of you know restrictions and all the like media blocking and all the like websites blocking and getting banned by Ruf Russian government and just in general the whole like situation felt too overwhelming and we didn't want to stay in this environment because like we couldn't change it but we could leave and we didn't feel like we want to um, stay and leave in that whole atmosphere anymore. There were things that were very important to us that we could not agree with and we wanted to leave because many people stay because they don't find these things that important as they were for us. The move was difficult and a very disorganized process. We were living in the beginning of March and we were, li we were living very quickly. It was just a kind of one day decision. Obviously we were thinking about that before, but the decision was made just like that. <laughs> From this point, several months later, I understand that we had time to finish all the documents that we needed to finish to kind of deal with all of our stuff and to finish toilet studying for driving license and maybe even give birth in Russia because obviously it's easier than giving birth abroad but back then uh, it was very unstable situation and, and we felt very nervous because every day was getting worse and worse and worse and we didn't know what to expect we didn't know like what will come and what will be like how the situation will be next week uh, so we decided that we don't want to risk it we don't want to just sit and wait how it will go we want to just pack our stuff and leave and then deal with all of our things that we left behind from abroad and there were several moments why we decided to do that um, for example we were worrying that the borders will be closed because, for example, in our city, the airports were closed, you know, the nearest city's airports were closed and Russian planes stopped flying abroad. Krasnodar is not that far from Ukrainian border and we didn't know if this whole, you know, thing will come to Krasnodar as well. Like, it didn't, so every everything is kind of safe. Um, in Krasnodar at the moment, but back then you didn't know what will happen in a week or two, so we decided also not to wait. And also there was that, you know, every day you wake up and the new media is blocked, <laughs> and like Instagram and Facebook and all of that, and it seems like YouTube would be next. Um, and there were all the signs that they will block YouTube as well, they didn't, but like we were 100% sure that they will and I was worrying that I would not be able to work at all because you know you can use VPN but you also don't know how long VPN will work so that's kind of complicated. YouTube is working in Russia so I would be able to post videos and uh, do all of that but I know that there would be very big troubles with receiving money from YouTube so I, I think, well, at some point our worries <laughs> about YouTube were true, but they didn't block it. So there were these small, like, little things that we decided not to wait and not to risk it and just to check our stuff and leave as soon as we can. And that's what we did. <laughs> Do you feel that it was the right decision to leave? I obviously feel sometimes kind of upset and emotional and I miss my home and I miss my friends and I talk to my friends who stayed and they're just living as usually uh, kind of normally and I sometimes think like <laughs> was it worth it but actually I think that it was a very good decision for us because yes it was complicated and hard and it's still emotionally kind of hard but I feel a little bit more safe and free here in this place. We can't really see us living in Russia anymore, uh, unfortunately, so I think it was the right decision when it comes to, you know, it's better to do something like that fast and painful and then start from new, 
in the new place and then your life will be better in several years uh, than just wait and wait and wait and then be disappointed that you didn't start earlier, that you didn't move before. My husband is 100% sure that it was the right one. He he doesn't even question that. <laughs> At least for our family, for our situation, because everybody's situation is different and many of our friends stayed and they kind of don't really understand why, why we left. Everybody has different kind of values when it comes to place where they live. So for us, it was important to you know, leave because we disagreed with some, some moments. Um, and we could do that because uh, I get income from YouTube, so I'm not, you know, attached to one place. I can move and just work from another country. And we didn't have any like apartment or car, anything physical that would hold us in Russia and make our move more complicated. So it was very easy for us at some point easier than for many other uh, families and it made sense for us because for many people I understand that it does not make sense for them to leave and that's why they don't want to leave, they just stay and they feel fine. Are you coming back to Russia someday? So as I said, we don't see ourselves living in Russia anymore, but as I said before too, uh, that was a big dream of mine to travel around Russia for my whole life and uh, I also miss my friends and relatives and I really want to come and visit all of them, to meet all of them and to come to Tula, to come to Krasnodar, to travel around a little bit as we are used to travel in Russia and I definitely want to come from time to time to visit everybody and to travel but I don't know where we will go next time because I'll be giving birth soon so <laughs> probably it would not happen anytime soon but I hope we'll just be coming back from time to time to for, for short um, trips. Do you know where you want to go and live long term? Can you go to the Europe or USA? Uh, we don't know so we we really don't have a plan for several years and it might feel a little bit stressful when you don't have a long-term plan but at the same time i feel that not always in life you have a long-term plan there are situations when you're just living now and you're just going day by day and decide what would be better for you and your family and also as i said getting uh, a visa to europe or america is very complicated uh, it's complicated not only because we are Russians, <laughs> but also because uh, there are very big amount of people who apply for visas now. So when you go to Europe or USA, you need to get some kind of immigration visa to live long term there, not a, not a tourist one, and it's even more complicated. Like it's hard to get visas like that. And also we don't have that many savings now to move again uh, to Europe or USA because moving requires a lot of money usually. So for now we decided that we'll stay in Georgia for uh, an unpredictable amount of time, uh, that we will just enjoy this country. I want to travel around it too. I want to explore it. I want to kind of go deeper into local culture and learn it. And I just, you know, when you come to some kind of place, I'm that person who wants to really deeply experience it. I don't like short trips to some cities or countries for like a day or two because I can't really experience the place and learn anything about it. So I like to really spend a lot of time in one place and just observe it. <laughs> I want to travel around Georgia and we also, you know, uh, want to settle down a little bit to go slowly and to see really if we need to move somewhere, if we want to move somewhere, to not rush because these decisions are kind of big decisions and I believe that they need to be taken a little bit slower <laughs> when it comes to moving to like Europe or USA or any other country. I think we'll look for some options that we have for different visas to different countries, but we'll be looking while we are living 
in Georgia, while we are enjoying this place, we decided not to rush, not to think too much about moving to some kind of different place, just to be present at the moment and slowly figure out what we want from our future and where we want to, you know, move or if we want to stay for like forever, <laughs> like we don't know yet. We'll see. Will you apply for Georgian citizenship and what will happen when your passport visa expires? Do you have to go back to Russia then? To apply for Georgian citizenship, you need to live five years in the country with a permanent residential permission. I'm not sure how it is in English, but the thing that, uh, like the document that uh, allows you to live full time in the country uh, because you have like a job here or relatives or real estate or something like that. And then after five years, you can apply for citizenship. We plan to apply for this permanent residential <laughs> permission uh, because I want to register a business here since I have to pay taxes here anyway. And then I can apply for this um, like residential thing. As I said, we don't need visas here so they can get inspired because we don't have them. But our passport will expire in 2030, uh, like they last for quite a long time. So we have enough time to, you know, decide something and to even get a citizenship. I don't know where we'll be, we will be living in five years. So I don't know if we will apply for Georgian citizenship in five years. If we stay in Georgia, probably we will. But if we will move somewhere else, then it wouldn't make no sense. If our passports get expired, uh, there is a Russian embassy in Georgia. So you can just come to an embassy and ask them to, you know, change your passport and they will do all of that. And the same with the baby. Uh, the baby will be born and they'll have to just go to the Russian embassy and just ask to make uh, the baby documents and they'll not have to go back to Russia. But uh, if we need to, we can go anytime and just do the documents in Krasnodar. It's like one day drive from here to Krasnodar on a car. Are your families and parents still in Russia? Do they plan to move too? Will your family be able to visit you when the baby comes? Yes, uh, our family, well, my family is fully in Russia. My parents live in Russia and my younger brother lives in Russia. And uh, Tola's mom is living in the USA. Uh, his dad passed away many years ago. So he, Tola has two sisters in Russia and two brothers also in the USA. So he has a big family and my small family lives fully in Russia. They don't plan to move anywhere. They are feeling completely fine in Russia. They have their apartments there, their job there, their friends, their whole life there. So they are living there quite comfortably and yes, they will come to visit us when the baby comes. My mom is coming in August and I hope my dad will be able to come too. He's not 100% sure if he'll be able to do that because of work. But my mom will definitely come. We are planning her trip at the moment, uh, like looking for tickets and for the ways she can come here. Tola's mom wanted to come from America too, but there are troubles with tickets, so we're not sure if she'll be able to, but we'll see. Uh, she, she will be able to, but probably later, because my mom wants to come right in August when the baby comes. Tola's mom probably will come a little bit later. Do your friends and family back in Russia already notice the effects of sanctions in their daily life? and what kind of changes or difficulties do they experience. As I said, most people notice that stores are leaving, prices are rising, and banks work weirdly. So these things my parents and relatives noticed the most, mostly worrying about prices for groceries and for household items and for everything and for tickets <laughs> and my friends um, worry mostly about like companies leaving and their favorite shops closing and my my dad is kind of fine but he's worrying a little bit about his job because he works for the international company there's still work but he worries a little bit that there might be troubles with transportation and they that they might close their work in Russia too, but for now they're still working. So 
I hope nothing, nothing like that will happen and I hope they'll still work. And also we left, so they're kind of feeling a little bit weird about that because we've been, we've been living far from them anyway. We've been living in Krasnodar and we haven't seen them that often, but at least we were in one country and now we're in another country, so they kind of don't know even what to think about that. Do your friends and family believe uh, what the government tells them? Most of our friends who stayed are very, you know, not into politics kind of people, so they don't watch news really, they don't uh, read any news and they try to just live their daily lives, uh, go to work, do things that they need to do and not think about anything global happening around them. So they're mostly not watching uh, government news and they also don't watch oppositional news. They try to kind of, you know, be neutral and just don't think about all of that too much. So I can't say that they believe government uh, and I can't say that they believe the opposition because they are kind of not really interested, if you can say it like that. They hear some news here and there, but they mostly try to just think about the things that they do daily about their own lives. But I definitely have uh, relatives who just watch TV and official news and they kind of trust what they've been told because they just, they don't have any other resources of information and they just believe that what is shown on the news is true. So I, I don't argue with them. Uh, I sometimes uh, tell them some information if we're talking about some topics, but uh, most of the time we just kind of avoid talking about politics in general. How is the church you were going to in Russia doing? They actually are doing quite fine and they help a lot. Uh, they, have, they have a team of people and some of my really good friends are there in this team also. They go to the city, Ukrainian city Mariupol, uh, from time to time and help with food and just, just talk to people. They help refugees, they bring some household stuff because the situation in this city has been very, very sad and there are a lot of people in need with no like water or food or electricity or anything. They're living in very bad, destroyed buildings. So. Uh, my friends and the other church members have been helping in this city, have been volunteering there weekly and they've been also church has been donating money for that and they've been raising other money for that and we've tried to participate too. So uh, I keep in touch with them because although we left, I know that they're helping and we want to kind of keep in touch with them and participate too as much as we can. How has being an immigrant changed your views in life and do you feel lost, detached or out on a happy journey? I feel kind of lost during the happy journey. <laughs> you know guys, I definitely feel much more respect to all the immigrants in the world. I've never thought that it's so hard emotionally and just physically to move to, to another country, another culture and live there. I always thought that it's kind of easy. But now I actually understand that when people say that they're immigrants, probably they have been going through very hard stuff and complicated situations and they had to make very difficult decisions. So I now have more respect to all the immigrants and I kind of understand a little bit more how the like how hard it is and also i think when you're moving a lot um you kind of have that feeling in you appear that your home is everywhere you take your home with yourself because you take yourself you take your family like my husband and my daughter and you create a new home in a new place and new place becomes your home for now i feel like my home is in tula i think like my home is in krasnodar i feel I, I don't feel Georgia like a home yet, but I'm sure if we'll leave several years here, I'll be feeling like it's my home too. And if we move somewhere else and I'll live there for several years, I'll feel like it's a home too. So like the, the feeling of home is kind of stretching <laughs> when you are moving from place to place. I'm kind of experiencing this transformation 
of understanding that I actually create the environment, the comfortable around environment around me by myself. And it doesn't matter if I live in Russia or in Georgia or somewhere else. Like it's my responsibility to make like the, the things around me feel like home and make myself comfortable and deal with all the things. <laughs> I kind of have that feeling now that I'm very responsible for my, my whole life and for all the decisions that I make. Have you experienced hateful comments or discrimination for being Russian? And have you experienced any discrimination in Georgia specifically? So when everything just started in February, uh, there were a lot of comments uh, on YouTube and in like a lot of messages in DMs, uh, kind of hateful ones. And a lot of very aggressive people were like texting and commenting. And there was a lot of bullying on the internet going on. Now I don't see any anymore, but Honestly, I've never experienced any discrimination or hate or rudeness in real life. So I feel that in real life, people are much more <laughs> kind uh, and careful than on the internet. And on the internet, they, they just express all of their thoughts without thinking if it would like really f make other people feel bad and offended. Uh, but in real life, people are much more you know careful and kind and friendly and if you are friendly and you act like a normal person usually people around you also act like normal people and they are friendly to you like back there were a couple moments when people in georgia refused to speak russian to me and said it to me in russian so i kind of could understand that they know russian but they don't want to speak to me in russian and they they had they had the expression on their face like they wanted to a little bit offend me but like I, it didn't offend me and I just continued to speak to them in English uh, because I don't know Georgian so I usually ask people if they speak Russian or if they speak English and uh, like sometimes they speak Russian sometimes they speak English sometimes they speak none of them <laughs> so and that's when things get complicated but it was not very offensive or it wasn't too rude it was probably just people wanted to show me that they kind of are not glad that i speak russian to them <laughs> so yeah most of the time everybody was very friendly the georgian hospitality has been just incredible uh, people who were speaking uh, russian very well they really wanted to share us to share with us their culture and their uh, history and they wanted to feed us uh, local food and really I've experienced a lot of actually help and support from um, locals much more than I thought. I see graffitis around Belize, offensive graffitis about Russians and they they do look a little bit scary but I feel that people just want to express themselves, express their thoughts but they probably would not express them in person when they meet you because they don't have any troubles with, with you specifically. Like they, they may be feeling aggressive about Russian government or Russian country or just Russian nation, but they don't have any like, you know, problems with, with you. So usually they're just kind of neutral or quite friendly. What's the biggest challenge for you living in Georgia and how it feels in another country? The language is the most difficult thing for me because as I said not everybody speaks uh, Russian obviously and not everybody speaks English so quite often we meet people who speak Georgian only. A lot of people speak Russian though at least at some point they understand some words. Um, some people speak English but Sometimes, sometimes it might be hard uh, when the person doesn't speak any of these languages and it's hard for me to communicate. And also because I can't read anything anywhere because everything is in Georgian, I have to reach out to people and ask them to help me if they speak Russian or English. And as an introvert, <laughs> it's, been, it's been like a nightmare for me because I feel so uncomfortable because, for example, if I have to call somewhere and start a conversation asking 
if a person speaks uh, Russian or English and quite often they don't and they can't like we can't understand each other. There were a couple of moments when I was calling somewhere and people didn't uh, speak Russian or English and they were just hanging up on me like they were just turning off the phone <laughs> and I was like but I need to talk to you. <laughs> I need your service. <laughs> and I, I'm the type of person who's used to do everything by herself. Like I usually come, see what's written, see like the instructions and I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> and now I have to talk to people and find the person who speaks my language or English and ask them to help me and to to explain to me how everything works, how ATM works because it's in Georgian how, like, where should I go, what should I ask, and, you know, it's been so, so complicated <laughs> from time to time. My husband is not feeling that bad about that because he likes to talk to people anyway, and I don't like to talk to people. I usually like to do everything by myself. So, yeah, language has been the, the most difficult thing for me, like, the biggest barrier for me to feel comfortably here. And in general, in another country, it feels... Uh, quite interesting, like the food is different, people are behaving a little bit differently. So I like to kind of observe, I like to look at people and notice some interesting similarities, uh, like national things, uh, how they behave and how they speak and how emotional they are, just, you know, it's it's been interesting for me. And a little bit of more specific questions. Is Agatha going to visit a local nursery so she will be able to learn your new national's language? Um, no, <laughs> we live in the countryside, far from the city, there are no nurseries around, no kindergartens, and we actually like that we work from home so we can dedicate a lot of our time to just be with Agatha, like, full-time and uh, we don't really want her to go to any nursery or kindergarten but uh, she communicates a lot with neighbors children uh, who are georgians they speak georgian and she communicates a lot with americans in the church and with some georgians in the church too we have an english speaking church here so like every sunday she communicates with English-speaking people and a little bit of Georgians. Uh, during the week she communicates with Georgians. Uh, sometimes on weekends uh, she communicates with our Russian friends here. So it's like a mix of <laughs> languages for her and I'm 100% sure that she will learn the language of the, the nation where she will live long term. So I don't worry about that at all. She kind of understands usually what people want from her, even if they speak different language. It's just soak <laughs> all the words that people tell them and they can kind of understand what people want most of the time. So she has been uh, quite comfortable now with our English speaking friends. She's been understanding them a little bit better than before. What about your flat in Russia and the stuff still in the flat? Our flat that I've been showing you in our Crescent Our Apartment tour is my dad's flat. I've been talking about that in that video, I think, a little bit. So it belongs to my dad and uh, we don't own it. <laughs> and now we are renting it to a friend, but in a couple of months my dad will move in there and he'll live there by himself because it's his flat and he's moving to Crescent Art, so he'll live there. We also took all of our personal belongings from there and we left only our furniture and things that would be needed for renters. So like dishes and some household things, uh, because in Russia usually apartments are rented fully furnished. So now our friend is using them and when my dad will move in, he'll be using them. And all the personal things we brought here to Georgia, so yeah, we don't have anything left there. <laughs> Were you able to bring your savings out of Russian bank? Yes, but they've been blocked for several months there and I've been very disappointed at the whole bank system and government system and I've been very, very mad at them. <laughs> Our central uh, bank blocked uh, all the stocks and I couldn't get any money that I had in my savings for many months and I've been really mad because 
you know when you're when you're keeping money in the bank you think that it's kind of no risk thing but then your bank blocks your money just just because they say well that's that's the complicated situation nowadays we are blocking all your money and you're not sure that they will give them back and you can't do anything with it and that's just make you feel like your money don't belong to you at all like well government and the bank just took them <laughs> from me they just opened stocks and the opportunity to take our savings back but i really don't trust the bank system at all anymore uh, we've been keeping all our money in in the bank uh, because we don't like to use cash that much and it was very comfortable for us but now i just I just keep most of them in cash because I just I just don't know what 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 else to do. Like um, the the bank system has been acting very weird lately. So do credit cards work abroad? Don't you guys have problems with opening and holding a bank account? Uh, Russian cards don't work abroad. Uh, Russian cards work only in Russia now. And we had to open a bank account here in Georgia and it was also a very complicated process. I have to wait for weeks for the bank to approve my, like I asked the bank if they can give me the bank card. I filled the questionnaire, like there were tons of questions I had to answer about uh, where my money comes from, where I'm planning to send them, how much I earn, like all of the information I could give, I gave them and I had to week, wait for several weeks for them to approve it. They, they also say no to most people at the moment, uh, to like most Russians and Belarusians. So I was very happy that they actually approved uh, my, my case and they gave me the card. But now our whole financial situation is figured out. Finally, we've been struggling with it for several months and it has been kind of stressful, but now the YouTube monetization is back. We got our cards here and just I got our savings from the Russian bank like everything is kind of figured out now finally and we're so glad <laughs> about that because it's time to give birth soon you don't want to deal with financial troubles when you're giving birth <laughs> what do you miss the most about Russia that's the last question and I wanted it to be also a little bit you know a cute and positive one so what I miss the most about Russia is obviously my friends and family. Um, I really miss them a lot. I miss that comfortness of being in your homeland, of understanding how things work, because uh, when you live your whole life in one country, you understand how things work. You can speak to people, you know, where, like what organizations you need to go to get something, you know, where to buy things. Everything is kind of... You know, you understand how things work. And when you move abroad to a completely different country with a completely different language, you have no idea where to get your documents, where to buy things, what is written, you know, on the signs on the street. And you start to speak to people and sometimes they don't understand you. So it's been much like complicated. And I miss that comfortness of knowing everything around you and knowing how to live your life in that place actually and also i really miss some services that we had in russia and we don't have here for example in russia we had an online marketplace similar to american amazon it's called Amazon in russia and uh you could just order anything you want and they will deliver it to your home and when i didn't know where to buy things i was just ordering them there and here in Georgia, they don't have any marketplace like that. So you can, you have to actually search for stores where you can buy things that you need and go there. But also not all the stores are using like Google Maps or, you know, not all the stores have websites. So sometimes you can, you have to know just where to buy things. And as a foreigner, I have no idea where to buy things and I have to ask people I have to ask locals where they get these things and these things and I have to actually like go there and, and look for them and buy them offline. 
And also in Russia, we had a wonderful service for buying uh, used items, so secondhand pre-owned things. There is a website and people, like everybody has been using it. People have been posting uh, there just stuff that they don't need and stuff that they want to sell. And I've been buying like so many things there because it's so comfort convenient to use. It's so comfortable. You can search by categories. You can search around the whole country with the delivery. You can search in your district. You can search with specific features. And it has been so comfortable to use it because like everybody's using it. So there are a ton of items. And I've been buying all the furniture there. I've been buying toys for Agathas there. And I've been like selling almost everything there. And here they don't have this service. So I miss that one a lot too. And I also miss that feeling of walking around the place that you know really well. So for example, um, when we are walking with my husband around my hometown, Tula, uh, I just walk and I see all of these buildings that I know from my childhood. I see the stores that I also know for many years and that I've seen for, for many years. And everything looks so familiar and so like cozy. And in Krasnodar, we've been living for a long time. So there are a lot of memories from all around the city and we're walking around and there are memories about each place. And I kind of like that feeling of being in the place that you know really well. Like I know every corner, I know just, just you know, there's just a very nice feeling. And here is a completely new place. So it's also interesting to explore a new place, but I miss a little bit that feeling of walking somewhere where I just very used to walk uh, around the place that I know really well. So these things I've been missing a lot and these were all the questions guys. I hope it was interesting for you to sit with me here and chat a little bit or a lot. <laughs> I'll leave, as I said, timestamps and also links to my previous videos because there were some questions that I've been answering in my previous videos. So as I said, I'll uh, leave the pregnancy Q&A and the live update uh, when we just came to Georgia because there were questions uh, that I've been answering in these videos. So, uh, so thank you a lot for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> Делать на год. Работать? Да. Сейчас, пять минут.